In this updated tutorial, we're going to show you why audio ducking is a great tool to use when you have tracks that compete with one another for audio. We have an actual tutorial I just produced, and what we're doing is showing how some transitions are included in editions of PowerDirector 365. If you look on track number two, you see on track two I have a background piece of music, and on track three I have my narration. I have track two muted, so let's just play it with track three. Here's what you have. The third transition in the series has gold hearts at the center. It also flashes to white and then shakes before moving into the second video clip. Now, this is fine, but watch what happens or listen to what happens when I add the background audio track on the same segment. The third transition in the series has gold hearts at the center. It also flashes to white and then shakes before moving into the second video clip. Now that can work if the audio mix for volume is just perfect. And in this case, it's not too bad, but it would be a little nice if it, I faded out a bit when automatically the voice in track three comes on. Now I can do that manually. I can hold the control key down and I can set some points on the audio on track number two. And when I, I can just click, click one here and click one here and drag it down here and lower this one and click this one and drag it down. And I can manually reduce that. I'm going to do control Z to undo because you have to do that every time you find an audio that competes with the audio in the narration in track number three. The faster way to do this is to use a tool called audio ducking. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to click not on the voice track, but on the background music track. If I right click on it, I can choose edit audio. And then one option I have is called audio ducking. Let's click on that. Now when you click on audio ducking, you have four controls that you can use. The first is the sensitivity. The default is 72%. Then the ducking level is 50%. Then you have a fade out duration. This one is three tenths of a second, which isn't very long, and a fade in. Now you can adjust these as you see fit. Now in this case, if you look at the audio waveform, you see it's pretty distinct on track three where I have the voice audio of my voice. So I don't think it, I would have to ha have the sensitivity really high on this one. The ducking level says drop the audio about half when you're competing with the audio of the narration in track number three. And then you can click the button at the bottom to apply to all the clips on audio on the same track. I only have one clip here, so I don't have to worry about that. But I like the defaults. I can increase the sensitivity a little, or I can increase the ducking level a little bit more to make it even softer. Let's listen as we try 50%. I'm going to click on OK, and it will analyze the audio. And now you notice what it's done. It's automatically done all those keyframes for the on the audio track to lower it to try to match. Let's see if this gives us the results that we're looking for. Let's play from here forward. The third transition in the series has gold hearts at the center. It also flashes to white and then shakes before moving into the second video clip. That's not too bad. I'm going to do a control Z to undo that. And let's see what it sounds like if I lower it even more. I'm going to right click again go to edit audio and audio ducking let's set the ducking level to 70 70 percent or so and click on ok and now you notice the change is even more dramatic between the sound when i'm speaking and the sound when i'm not let's listen to this the third transition in the series has gold hearts at the center it also flashes to white and then shakes before moving into the second video clip. 
Okay, let's look at one other variation that we have here. I'm going to do Control Z to undo that again. And we'll right click and try a third option here under Edit Audio, Audio Ducking. This time I'm going to change the fade in and out duration from 3 tenths of a second to 6 tenths of a second. So it'll be slightly slower. And I, I don't have to match the fade in and fade out if I don't want. And I'm going to go back from 70%. Let's go back to maybe 64%. Click on OK. And again, you, you notice the keyframes are not quite as steep in the area where we have, have them start and end. This affects the angle of the keyframe. Let's see if we like this one better or not. We'll play it. The third transition in the series has gold hearts at the center. It also flashes to white and then shakes before moving into the second video clip. I like that one. That, that seems like a good mix between the two. So this is how you can automatically set all those audio keyframes using one set of controls that you can adjust and keep doing control Z to undo it until you get something you like and therefore adjust between especially narration and either music or some other audio track in your project in CyberLink PowerDirector. Audio ducking is a great tool, especially if you do podcasts and have background music plus narration.